Greetings YouTube, the doctor is in. Dr. Urias Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and Dragons. And today we are going to be talking about the new grappling system. There is kind of a new shoving system too, but there's a new grappling system in the 2024 Player's Handbook and the 2024 D&D rules. We're going to be talking about that, all the particulars with it and what is involved in it. But hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave a question or a comment below. All right. So right now what I have up here is I have the old grappling rules from the 2014 Player's Handbook. These were mainly... Um, they're not really attack-based. They kind of are and kind of not. They are mainly skill-based. So when you wanted to grab a creature, you used the attack action to make a special melee attack, which is a grapple. Um, if you're able to make multiple attacks with an attack action, this replaces one of them. So you can only do it once. And then the target of a grapple must be no more than one size larger than you and must be within reach. So if you are medium then you can grapple something that is large. If you are large, then you can grapple something that is huge. And huge, I th I don't think there's a way. There are some ways to get people huge. Um, but for the most part, it's medium is large. If you're small, then you, you might be at a little bit disadvantage. This, this does follow over into the 2024 rules. But basically... You, you'd have to have a free hand. they got to be within reach, and they have to meet the size uh, requirements. And then you make an athletics check, which is contested by the target's strength, uh, athletics, or dexterity acrobatics. You automatically exceed it if they were incapacitated, and if you succeed, the target is grappled, which meant uh, in that, in the legacy, is that their speed becomes zero, um, and that's essentially it. So, uh, and then there's an escape action. So it was skill, it was a skill check versus a skill check. And hex could be used very effectively in this system to give disadvantage to that skill check. Now, uh, you could also move a grappling creature. So um, you can drag or carry the grappled creature with you, but your speed is halved. Unless the creature is two or more sizes smaller than you. So if you're medium, they'd have to be tiny. If you're large, then they would be small. So, okay. So that's the old rules. Here are the new... Now, the new rules are kind of spread out in a couple of different places. I'm not really sure I like the way that they've got this spaced out. So there is a rules glossary um, at the back of the book. And that is where a lot of these new kind of special conditions and things come up it's not really mentioned like all the combat and a lot of the other rules are in the very first chapter and then they refer back to the glossary so we go we start with an unarmed strike so instead of using a weapon to make a melee attack you can use a punch kick headbutt or similar forceful blow in game terms this is an unarmed strike a melee attack that involves using your body to damage, grapple, or shove a target within five feet of you. So you have to have, again, you have to have a free hand to do this. So, you know, you could have a sword in your hand um, or something like that. Whenever you use an unarmed strike, choose one of the following options. So you make an attack roll against a target, your bonus to the roll equals your strength modifier plus your proficiency bonus on a hit. The target takes bludgeoning damage equal to one plus your strength modifier. That really didn't change. Unarmed strikes basically are the same between 2014 and 2024. However, grapple did change. The target must succeed on a dexterity or strength saving throw. It chooses which. So now it's a saving throw. It is no longer a skill versus skill contest uh if it fails to save it's grappled the dc for the saving throw is is standard um and any escape attempts are standard so it's eight plus your strength modifier and your proficiency bonus so if you got an 18 strength then it's eight plus the four from your strength which is 12 
and then anywhere from 14 on up for proficiency bonus. The grapple is possible only if the target is no more than one size larger than you and if you have a hand free to grab it, okay? So um, you have to have a hand free to do that. There's shoving, which again is a strength or dexterity saving throw, um, and then you push them five feet or you can cause them to go prone. And then the, the DC for that is the same as, as what it is for grapple. Um, it doesn't say you have to have a, uh, a hand free for that one. So my guess is you could shove somebody with a shield. So, but we're concentrating on grapple. So now it's no longer a skill versus skill contest. And uh, now it's a saving throw. So s things, and we've already put this build out. So check it out on my channel. The, uh, the smooth operator is a specializes in putting penalties on saving throws. So anything that would put a penalty on the saving throw will um, help with this to be able to have somebody grapple them successfully. But now it's less about having that great athletics. So uh, another thing that we want to look at is it mentions the grappled condition. So here we are, grappled condition and then grappling. So if you are grappled, if you successfully did this right here with the saving throw, then your speed becomes zero. Um, you have disadvantage on attack rolls against any target other than the grappler. Okay. And the grappler can drag or carry you when it moves, but every foot of movement costs it an extra movement unless you are tiny or two sizes smaller than it. So again, if it's large, then it can drag you full speed if you are small, that kind of thing. And then we've got grappling. A creature can grapple another creature, and we talked about that already by using an arm strike. Successfully grappling a creature gives it the grapple condition. One grapple per hand. A creature must have a hand free to grapple another creature. Some stat blocks and games allow creatures to grapple using tentacles, maws, or other things. Okay. And then there's escaping a grapple. Now, this is where skill checks come in grappled creature can use its action to make a strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics check against the grappler's dc ending the condition on itself as a success the condition also ends if the grappler is incapac has the inca incapacitated condition or if the distance between the grappler the grapple target and the grappler exceeds the grappler's range so here's where skill checks come in and again Hex could be important here to stop something from escaping. Because once you've got them, all you have to do is this, then there's no more saving throws. It is only a, a check. And it has to use this action to make that check. Okay, so Hex, here's the new Hex. You place a curse on a creature you see within range, which is 90 feet. And the target has disadvantage on ability checks made with the chosen ability. So you could choose, you could choose the best one that they have, strength or dexterity, and then they have disadvantage on that. So there's still some some use for hex out of this. It's just this initial check is not affected by the hex because it's a saving throw now. But it could be affected by things like bane or unsettling words or uh, the uh, the bonus that uh, or the penalty that sorcerers can impose, something like that. Um, all right, so the grappler feat has also changed. So here, here is the legacy feat. So it says you have, have advantage on attack rolls against creature you are grappling. Uh, that's in addition to them being grappled. And then uh, you can use your action to try to pin a grappled creature. To do so, make another grapple check if you succeed, and the creature, uh, you and the creature are both restrained until the grapple ends. Okay, here's the new grappler feat. So you get a bump to either your strength or dex. You can punch and grab. So when you hit a creature with an unarmed strike as part of an attack action on your turn, you can use both the damage and grapple options. You can only use this benefit once per turn. So uh, if we go back here, there are three options when you use an unarmed strike. Damage is one of them and grapple. If you're a grappler, you can use both of these at the same time, which is pretty good. Um, you have advantage on attack rolls against a creature you creature grappled by you. So that's 
very similar to this one right here. And then finally, you don't have to spend extra movement to move a creature grappled by you if the creature is your size or smaller. So um, if, it, if you're medium and it's medium, then you don't have to spend the, you can just, just go. What is missing from this is the uh, pinning. There's no more pinning. There's no more restrained condition for the new grappler feet. That keeps popping up. So um, I, I, I don't think that that's a nerf. I think there's a few things in here that make this really advantageous, like the punch and grab is great. It's one once per turn. But if you have multiple attacks, you can punch them, grab them, grapple them, and then you can, you got, you're going to have advantage on all attack rolls, and you can keep punching them. Or you can shove your sword into them or whatever. So the last thing I want to talk about is the monk, because the monk has something special about grappling. So it's called this dexterous attacks. You can use your dexterity modifier instead of your strength modifier for the attack and damage rolls of unarmed strikes and monk weapons. In addition, you can use grapple or, sh or the grapple or shove option of your unarmed strike. You can use your dexterity modifier instead of your strength to determine your DC. So... You don't have to have a high strength monk to do that grapple unarmed strike. And if you're a monk with the grappler feet, you can add one to your dexterity and then you can punch them using an unarmed strike and you replace the unarmed strike damage with your martial arts die. And um, if you use a focus point to do flurry of blows, you can do all of you can make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action so you could actually use an a bonus action if you are a grappler to grapple and punch something and then just start wailing on them after that so there's a lot of good things that come with the monk and grappling i think the the monk is definitely made for grappling but all in all i i think i like the changes that they've made to grapple um, there are new ways that we're going to have to figure out how to use it, but um, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of a lot more grapplers that are going to be in the game. All right, that is what I have for everybody today. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and I will catch everybody later.